why are these people waiting? Mm. So I would see, I would try and organize to clear the queue quickly. Mm. I was just conscious people shouldn't wait here. Mm. Then maybe somebody couldn't pay. I'm like, no, no, we, it's okay, we'll see you. You'll come and pay, I'll sign guarantee for you. Mm. So because of oh, that- you, you do that? Yeah, yeah. So that's when I moved, I worked at Maristops for some time. Mm -hmm. Then I moved to Avenue Hospital. What was your job at Maristops? My job was a clinician, so a medical officer. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Uh, so I worked as a medical officer. I would see the outpatients. Mm. Uh, you know, you need to admit, you would admit. The, the Maristops then was the one based, where was it So based? I first worked at the one at Kencom. Okay. And then I went to Isli. All right. Yeah. Okay. And then at this point, I saw a job at Avenue. Mm -hmm. So I moved to Avenue. All right. But before I moved to Avenue, I was also doing a locum at Aga Khan Hospital. What's a locum? like a part-time job. Mm -hmm. But my part-time job was not clinical. Mm -hmm. It was paperwork. Mm. So I used to sign, I used to go in the evening mm -hmm. and because of insurance patients, mm -hmm. and the doctors would see the patients mm -hmm. and their notes. But it was my role mm. to go through all the insurance forms to ensure they have the correct information for Aga Khan to submit them to the insurance company for payment. Oh. So I could go and do that at night. Oh. So I would work two jobs. I would work at Marisops, in the evening, I would go to Aga Khan and I would work until 1 a.m. Oh, man. And I would go home. And then Ooh. I would get up and then I go to Maristops. Oh. So that period of time, Quite a I would sleep maybe four hours a, a night or something. Wow. But family needed to be taken care of. Then I got a job at Avenue, which paid a little more. Yeah. So now I left the Aga Khan job. I remember Aga Khan used to pay me 27000 And then I now left and I went to Avenue. Yeah. And uh, now I was... I was uh, not too bad layoff. I think uh, they paid me, I remember it was maybe 100,000 before tax. What did you enter uh, Avenue as? Medical officer. Medical officer. I entered as a medical officer. Now it's a private hospital. Private hospital. My work is to do shifts, mm -hmm. see patients in outpatient. Mm -hmm. And uh, you're you know, a general practitioner. General practitioner. Role. Finish the queue. Yeah. But I think again, because of my consciousness spirit, mm -hmm. I am like, why are these people waiting? Mm. So I would see, I would try and organize to clear the queue quickly. Mm. I was just conscious people shouldn't wait here. Mm. Then maybe somebody couldn't pay. I'm like, no, no, we, it's okay, we'll see you. You'll come and pay, I'll sign guarantee for you. Mm. So because of oh, that- you, you do that? Yeah, yeah. Somebody, you know, I met, I met somebody two months ago. Mm. I went to church in Rai. Mm. We had a small function mm. there and I went mm. to Rai. Mm. And after the church, mm. a mother came to me. Mm. I said, I just want to come and say thank you. Mm. I said, I said you, do you remember me when you were in Avenue? I said, I don't remember. He said, when you were in Avenue as a doctor, my child was sick and they needed to admit my child and I did not have a deposit. Wow. We did not have a deposit. You signed for me personal guarantee to admit my child. And that child now oh. is that girl there, like she's finished, I think she's in campus or something. Oh man. Exactly. Oh man. So because of that, yeah. I ended up being the manager of our patients. Oh. Then I moved on to become medical quality manager. That's where I started management. It, it, it's amazing. I yeah. don't want to rush on that because yes. the issue you're mentioning about just clearing the outpatient. Yes. I yeah. just, I think this morning or sometime I read a quote about the success of an uh, a hospital yeah. is a, a long a full outpatient is actually not the success of it doesn't show that a, a hospital is doing very well yeah you know it should be like an empty outpatient you know it shows that you're clearing people fast the waiting time the waiting time waiting time pretty, is a measure quick. of yeah. quality of a hospital right yes and when you, and even now when you listen to people mm. the biggest complaint of people about health care is not outcome yeah it is the waiting time. Even when you hear people talk about Kenya National Hospital, it is waiting time. Because you feel like uh, uh, my life is at risk. I'm, and I'm here, I, and, and I'm I don't know when no I'm one, going to be here. Yeah, yeah, no know. one has told me anything. I'm still on, exactly. on the queue. It is waiting time. Yeah. So we really, that was my, like, my passion. Right. So, I, you know, you just have to make sure people are coming and going. And you're calling it consciousness. It's consciousness. Mm. Because, you know, if you don't have that consciousness, mm. If you, you see your patient, you come out, you see there are 15 people waiting, mm. then you go for lunch. So, so, okay? so that's not something you had to learn in school. It's no. not all the six years in school. It's, no. it's something else. Yeah. It's upbringing. It's mm. just consciousness. Like mm. You can go for lunch if there are 15 people waiting. Mm. But generally, what is our thing? It's one o'clock, I'm gone. Mm. I'm going for lunch. I'm mm. coming back. Mm. Then my time has come up. I, my shift was up to 8 p.m. Mm. I'm off. My shift has ended. 
That's what my employer has signed for me. Mm. It is now up to the people who are coming for the night shift to, to pick, sort out this. this but up, I would yeah. find myself, I would find that my consciousness would not allow me to just leave. So I would actually end up extending my yeah, shift, shift mm. now helping whoever is coming for the next shift mm. so that we quickly mm. clear mm. and so that we don't leave people waiting. Mm. And mm. I think that spirit is what now the management noticed and gave me more responsibility. Mm. And that's how my management journey started. Mm. My management journey started at Avenue Hospital. Oh, at Avenue. Yes. Which, what, what, what year is this particularly? This is now um, 1998. Mm -hmm. 99, mm. 2000, it's around there. So you've been given, uh, you've been promoted at Avenue to be head of? Medical, uh, to, uh, to outpatient manager. Mm -hmm. And then after that, to be in charge of medical quality mm. across mm. The, the, you know, the Avenue group. Mm. But something interesting happened around this time. Mm -hmm. Avenue started what we would call um, clinical management, mm -hmm. where you have companies that mm -hmm. sign up with you yeah okay mm -hmm. it's like a what the model we call now hmo health maintenance organization that was a model that came from the us which is a something which is talked about under universal health coverage now mm -hmm. you know how do you give people health insurance okay and how do you ensure that the health insurance is tied to a reward model for health for you to keep healthy so that you're for, not just okay. getting health insurance you're also being incentivized to stay healthy as the patient as the as the person as, as, the, as, the, member. Yeah, as the member because the health insurance without health becomes a cost that's true okay yeah at that point in 1998 avenue avenue started to develop this model so it's incentivizing its Compa these members uh -huh. to stay healthy okay now how did we do that mm -hmm. so the model that we had was you'd go to a company like nakomat Mm -hmm. um, I remember uh, the, the was it called Fairview Casino or something, mm -hmm. and we had many companies like those. Mm -hmm. And we would go and say, "You have a thousand staff. Mm -hmm. uh, we would like to offer you a package where you pay one thousand per staff. You pay to us to Avenue now to Avenue. Okay. And if they are sick, mm -hmm. they come to us. We treat them at no charge to you. Oh wow. Okay. Okay. But they can't go anywhere else. Oh. Go, they only come to Avenue. So it's okay. not like an open insurance. Mm. So it, it's kind of a provider model. Mm. It's you giving the insurance mm. and it's you giving the service. Mm. So Nakumat staff, Village Market, mm. uh, Fairview Casino. So you went for companies? Yes, companies. Mm. Grand Regency. Mm. They would sign up their staff with mm. us. Mm. And now you know you have this file, this Grand Regency, this, mm. this and this, mm. and this is how much they are paid. Mm. So your role mm. is to ensure that they stay healthy. Because if they come, the 1,000 is wiped off. Very fast, very I can fast. imagine. Exactly. I'm actually thinking what the, that business model is very risky. It's very risky. Yeah. But that means that you have to invest in the health. Who now? The, as Avenue. Uh, as Avenue. Yes. Yeah. So my role mm -hmm. as a medical quality manager right. was now to work with the other doctors to consistently review the demand of health services from these companies mm. and identify traits using just basic data. Mm. And you could tell, for example, you're saying, you know, for the last few months, mm. how come we are getting so many from this company, from this company mm. with gastritis or mm. with, you know, with mm. stomach problems? Mm. We would then go to the company mm. and give a talk mm. on how to stay healthy, mm. how to avoid stomach problems, mm. how to avoid respiratory mm. problems. Mm. And I led that program. Whoa. That's how my public health passion started. And whenever you would see a rise, mm. you would then go to the company and you'd mm. work with them. Mm. And maybe you find this one family did that it, actually is doing all this. Did it fully work? I, it, I'm curious it about that particular model. It actually worked. Mm. It actually worked. We ran it for a very long time. And when I, uh, in, 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 a, in about another, um, by the time I was, before I left Avenue, mm -hmm. I discovered actually you can use the same model for pregnancy. And I said, F for, for uh, pregnant women. What, what exactly? I'll explain that. Mm -hmm. That now you say, if you're pregnant, mm -hmm. we designed a package. Mm -hmm. It's called the ABC package. Mm -hmm. So we say, if you're pregnant, come to us. You will pay one fee. Okay? We'll charge you 15,000 shillings. Mm -hmm. That 15,000 will be enough for your antenatal visits and, and delivery. Okay. And we will also take the risk that if you actually complicate and you need a cesarean section, we'll not charge you for it. Hmm. Which then means I have to invest 
in ensuring that the you have a normal delivery. Yeah. Okay? Oh, my How goodness. did I do that? We would then work with you, ensure that in every antenatal clinic, we have an ultrasound for you. So I had an ultrasound machine in the room. I would check the baby, monitor. You could call me anytime. And then I started doing Lamaze. I don't know that you've ever heard of Lamaze. We did a Lamaze. You see, for, exactly. Yeah. So I started doing Lamaze classes for all the members of the yeah. ABC package. Yeah, but for just, free. Just to explain Lamaze. Uh -huh. So Lamaze mm. is this process where, mm. you know, if, if a woman is pregnant, mm. you actually take them through a series of exercises, knowledge that helps them more to be more likely to deliver normally. Right. Okay. Yeah. And to have a normal birth because mm. birth is natural. Mm. Birth is natural. It's not a sickness. Mm. Pregnancy is natural, mm. and it's expected that mm. the outcome of pregnancy is a normal delivery. Yeah. You know, and uh, if you look, animals deliver. They don't get the cesarean sections. <laughs> that is very funny. <laughs> <laughs> and it's true, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. It's they true. do not require <laughs> CS. They, they don't need CS. <laughs> So see, it's a human creation yeah. because probably of our lifestyle, mm. you know, whether you are carrying yourself well, you are active, mm. especially with sedentary lifestyles, mm. then you are less like, you know, you start affecting your normal process. Mm. So Lamaze is a way of reversing that, of mm. saying, you can actually live a normal life. This mm. is what you eat. This is how you sleep. This is mm. how you exercise. Mm. And over time, mm. you start descending the child yeah. through a set of exercises yeah. and therefore you increase the chance of a normal and complicated delivery. So you you introduced so you you introduced this this pregnancy program. Yes. And Lamas was part of it. Yes. Did you see it through? Or yeah, yeah, yeah. I used to train the Lamas oh myself. Oh my goodness. So I would actually, and it was free for all the members of this package because mm. it was in our interest mm. for them to have a normal. Of course. Delivery. Of course. But now, you know, we said if you're not a member, yeah. you can still join Lamas, but yeah. pay. But, you'll have but to for pay. all members, yeah. free. Yeah. I used to run it myself yeah. on Saturday. Yeah. Every Saturday morning, I would yeah. be with them in a classroom, in, like in, 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 in a, a space hall, like yeah. this. Yeah. And had bought all the, I had imported yeah. all the small parts, ordered yeah. through e commerce, yeah. the small balls, the, tools, the big ones, the, the yeah. tools. Yeah. And uh, it became an extremely popular clinic. I used to run it on Wednesday. I started off with um, one. By the time I left, I was seeing 40 patients a day on Wednesday. It became wow. so crazy for me that actually Avenue started now an antenatal clinic after that with a full-time obstetrician, which they didn't have before. Gigi, you know, this is interesting because these are stories we never, <laughs> would, would never have had or, or even known of before. Yeah. Um, what, so this is, this is just your introduction in, in, in the private sector. Yes. In, 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 but in public health. Yes. And, 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 um, and, and you're going, you're fully charged now in, yes. in, in, in this and yeah. you're bringing innovations as well. Right. Um, what else around this time yeah. uh, and in your time at Avenue is yeah. happening and how long, do you, how long do you stay there? So what's happening is that now we are developing this uh, HMO model, health maintenance organization model, where yeah. we are now signing companies, taking the risk and providing the service, improving, meeting companies. So I started now doing marketing, clinical marketing. So I would go and talk to companies, even the ones who need to sign up. I would go and make a talk about why Avenue is the right place. Mm. You see, now I start to do marketing. Basically, I start to market services. And I'm a doctor. Yeah. And I start to market this model of yeah. health maintenance. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And that goes on. Mm. And then at some point, it becomes so intense. We start um, going for extension services. We are doing, we are even um, uh, doing uh, outreach, mm. all those things. Mm. Then Madison calls, Madison mm. Insurance. Madison calls you. Yes. Says, you know, we are looking for a medical services manager. We think you should interview. Can we take a break and come back to Madison immediately? We take yeah. a quick bio break. We shall be right back after this. 